Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that video. The rest of this lecture will talk about key themes from that video. In particular, how the Saudi Iranian rivalry is about ideology, but also about geopolitics. Let's first of all speak about different ideologies help explain this rivalry. So, um, this might seem a little bit crazy at first, but I'll talk you through it and hopefully it will make sense. What are the differences between Saudi Arabia and Iran, in particular in terms of its ideology? Well, one is Saudi Arabia is allied to the US. The US provides security to Saudi Arabia and other sunny oil producing Gulf monarchies. And this constitutes the regional order. This is like for decades, these have been the powerful countries in the Middle East. And the ideology of Saudi Arabia is Saudi Arabia is a monarchy. So um, the de facto leader is Prince Mohammed bin Salman. And Saudi Arabia is a majority Sunni country. So it is a Sunni monarchy. Saudi Arabia opposes any threat to the status quo. So the status quo is these oil producing Sunni monarchies and threats could be political Islam. For example, the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, the Muslim Brotherhood is a threat to these monarchies because it represents an alternative um, form of governments like political Islam, they are political parties. Um, and for instance, in Egypt, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood won an election uh, and the Saudi Arabian government opposed the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt because it was a threat to their rule. Uh, also, Shia minorities or majorities in other countries that are challenging these Sunni monarchies. Iran is different. So Iran is actually it is anti-American. And the reason that it's anti-American is that in 1979, the Iranian revolution overthrew an American public government in Iran. The Shah of Iran was supported by America, but he did not enjoy, the Shah did not enjoy legitimacy among the Iranian people. So in 1979, Iran overthrew this American public government and, you know, the Ayatollah Khomeini called the U.S. the Great Satan. Another difference is Iran receives support from Russia. It's not as strong as American support for Saudi Arabia, but there is support from Russia. Now, w since the 1979 Iranian Revolution, Iran has proclaimed itself as a legitimate leading Muslim state, challenging Saudi Arabia's status as a leading Muslim state. And as a result, Iran has sought to export its theocratic revolution to other monarchies. Basically, it wants to do the same thing. It wants to have a popular uprising against a illegitimate government and have a similar revolution that happened in Iran that happens in these monarchies as well. So like in Saudi Arabia, in Bahrain, in the United Arab Emirates, in Yemen, and overthrow these governments. So Iran from like the 1980s, 1990s to today is seeking to export its revolution. But in particular, it is really trying to support the Shia minorities or majorities uh, in other states uh, to overthrow these type of governments. So the ideology of Iran is it's anti-American, it's revolutionary Islam, it's theocratic, and it's Shia, which is different from Saudi Arabia. So summary, Saudi Arabia and Iran both claim to lead the Muslim world. There's a competition for influence. Iran's model is revolutionary Islam. Saudi Arabia is about maintaining the regional order of Sunni monarchies, oil producing, um, and the U.S. provides security to these countries. Iran is a threat to the status quo. Now, this fight between Iran and Saudi Arabia really started in 2003. The US invasion of Iraq in 2003 left a security vacuum. So there was no functioning state or security. 
And Iraq was a sunny state under Saddam Hussein. And when the 2003 Iraq invasion happens, Iran saw this as an opportunity. Iraq is basically separating Saudi Arabia and Iran. And Iran saw that this is a really important opportunity to flip Iraq from being a Sunni country into a Shia country or a Shia led country. So it started arming, training and funding Shia mil militants in Iraq. As a result, Saudi Arabia also arms militants and ultimately the Shia militants won control of the governments. So suddenly the, the balance of power started shifting in Iran's favor. The Arab Spring in 2003 or 2011 was also a big moment where there was security vacuums across the Middle East, where there were these anti-monarchy protesters challenging state authority in weak states. And <clears throat> as the governments were being challenged, these were opportunities for Iran and Saudi Arabia to fight for influence. So Iran would support the Shia militants and governments, and Saudi Arabia mostly supports Sunni governments, but also militants, for example, in Syria. So these are just some examples, like Saudi Arabia supports Gulf monarchies um, in Bahrain and Yemen, but it also supports Sunni militants in Iraq and Syria. Um, Iran supports Shia groups challenging Sunni monarchies, for example, the Houthis in Yemen. And um, Iran supports also pro-Shia governments like uh, Assad in Syria. So the balance of power is shifting. Saudi Arabia is really concerned about growing Iranian influence because, remember, uh, Iraq used to be a Sunni-led uh, country. But since 2003, it is now part of the Shia, what is called the Shia Crescent, where there's this crescent of Shia influence from Iran, Iraq, Syria, and Lebanon as well. This has even got worse for Saudi Arabia with the conflict in Yemen, where the Houthis, which are pro-Iranian, they receive support from Iran, have actually carved out a space of control in Yemen that is separate from the governments. And this has led people to call it a Shia full moon because basically Saudi Arabia is now surrounded by pro-Iranian um, groups, governments, militants, and this represents a serious security threat to Saudi Arabia. An example of this is uh, in Yemen. So just remember that the Houthis, which are a pro-Iranian militant group, control this territory in Yemen. And this means that Iran has access and control over two really important strategic choke points for the supply of oil getting out of these from Saudi Arabia and these Gulf monarchies. So in Bab, or Bab el Mandab and the Strait of Hormuz, Iran is in a position to seize oil tankers leaving Saudi Arabia. And an example of this happened uh, in uh, the Straits of Hormuz, where Iran actually, and I'll just go to it, Iran actually seized control, control of a uh, British oil tanker. And this gives it great capacity to disrupt energy s supplies getting out of these places. So the balance of power in the Middle East, so returning to what we talked about two weeks ago, it's not unipolar. It's not necessarily even bipolar, even though I've spoken about Iran and Saudi Arabia. It's actually multipolar. So the four main countries are obviously Saudi Arabia and Iran, but also Turkey and Israel. Distribution of multipolarity tends to lead to instability. So where there are multiple countries fighting for influence and dominance, this can lead to high levels of instability and conflict. Um, so the situation kind of looks like this. Saudi Arabia, Turkey, and Iran in particular compete for dominance. Israel 
is involved in a lot of conflicts, it's mainly not seeking regional dominance, but more it's seeking security. Um, now, the balance of power is shifting in Iran's favor um, because Iran is really effective at using hybrid warfare, like Russia. Iran is not a conventionally powerful country. Its economy is not great. Um, its military conventionally is not extremely powerful. But what it is, is Iran is really well placed to take advantage of the Middle East uh, security environments. Basically, this security environment is defined by the collapse and security of weak states, which are then the scene of proxy wars fought and funded by outside actors. Iran has managed over the last 15 years to build up a network of non-state alliances right across the Middle East. These are often referred to as proxy militias. So they've trained, funded and armed Shia militia groups to effectively challenge Sunni governments, particularly those with weak legitimacy. And it also is effective at economic warfare, such as sabotaging oil supply. This is more the reason that Iran is rising as an influence, though. Now, the balance of power theory, if you remember, is when one country becomes too powerful, other countries ally together to balance against it. Iran is not becoming conventionally too powerful. Like, it's not necessarily about one country becoming too powerful, but whether the rising state power has overtly aggressive foreign policy against the status quo. So... Iran is challenging the status quo and other countries are trying to balance against this threat. And the status quo are the oil producing countries that are allied to the US. Iran's rise is really about the Arab world's weakness, that it has difficulty managing a country that has the size of the economy of like the state of Massachusetts in America. So Iran is not conventionally powerful It is challenging the status quo through an aggressive foreign policy, and it's very effective at doing this because of hybrid warfare, that it's building this network of non-state alliances across the Middle East. Now, if we just go back to Sykes-Picot, what is this proxy war, these weak states, what has this all led to? Well, the Sykes-Picot borders are somewhat resilient. Like we could see that in Saudi Arabia, Oman and United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, Egypt, uh, Jordan, these borders largely still exist. But these wars over the last 15 years have really tested the Sykes-Picot borders. The governments in many of these countries do not control, have control over their territory. If you see here, and this is from a few years ago, because the Islamic State is not, um, that is not as big as it as it was a few years ago. But this is an example from a few years ago where many militant groups, non-state actors, control different parts of the territory. And in these weak states, the Sykes-Picot borders are collapsing. They're just, they don't really exist anymore. So that's an issue that, faces the future of the Middle East, um, the shifting borders, the lack of government control over its territory, um, these proxy wars that are fought between Iran and Saudi Arabia in these countries. Um, And this is the source of instability within the Middle East. Okay, Uh, please do the Moodle quiz now.